see. Okay. Second reading. Oh, gotcha. Okay, gotcha. And then I just spell it. And okay. put it just okay. like this. And then if you forget, it, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> okay. But I'll go over that again okay. with you on
At this time, I invite you to please stand and face toward the rear of the church. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. In the waters of baptism, Joe died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. At his baptism, Joe was clothed in a white garment, the outward sign of his Christian dignity. We now place this white pall over his casket as a reminder of that dignity in Christ. Please join in our entrance hymn on Eagle's Wings. Welcome. We begin this celebration recognizing God present in our midst. And I know it's been a hard year for the McDonald clan, and it's hard to be here again to celebrate another death. But what we celebrate also is birth into life. And that's why we begin with baptism. It's why we trust in God's love and mercy. And so let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery your servant Joe, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. I invite you now to be seated.
A reading from the book of Psalms. I lift my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let our foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor by moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil, will keep your life. The Lord will keep you, your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. The word of the Lord. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. my shepherd, so nothing shall I want. I rest in the meadows of faithfulness and love. I walk by the quiet waters of peace. Gently you raise me and heal my weary soul. You lead me by pathways of righteousness and truth. My spirit shall sing the music of your name. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. should wander the valley of death. I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Your rod and your staff, my comfort and my hope. You have set me a banquet of love in the face of hatred. follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of my God forevermore. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all fall asleep, but we shall all be changed. In an instant, 
in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For that which is corruptible must clothe itself with incorruptibility, and that which is mortal must clothe itself with immortality. And when that which is corruptible clothes itself with incorruptibility, and that which is mortal closes, clothes itself with immorality, immortality, then the word that is written shall come about. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers, be firm, steadfast, always fully devoted to the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord. Jesus went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. So there is so much to say about Job, but I'm going to limit myself. And I know, Megan, you're going to share some things with us later too, and that's perfect. You know, the three things I want to share are the word amen, evangelization, and poverty of spirit. Now, first, amen. You know, Joe was not often on time for Mass. I don't know if that's a genetic trait of the McDonald clan or not, but... Joe was rarely on time, but I always knew when he was here in church because there would be this big bellowing voice saying, Amen. And I knew Joe was here and it felt good. But you know, the word Amen means, yes, I believe. And so it's appropriate that our first reading is from the book of Psalms because those 150 Psalms were Jesus' prayer book. That's what Jesus prayed on a daily basis. And that's why many of the words that he said as he hung upon the cross came right out of the book of Psalms. But those Psalms are beautiful because they're an experience of every aspect of human life. If you go through the Psalms, you'll see that there are Psalms of praise. There are Psalms of lamentation. 
there are psalms that are just really upset with God. And there are psalms where we feel abandoned and lost. And there are psalms where we place our trust in the Lord. And that's what Joe did. Joe placed his trust in the Lord and he said on a regular basis, amen, yes, I believe. And that's what leads us into evangelization because Joe was a talker. Joe liked to talk and he would talk to everyone. And even if they weren't listening, Joe would talk to them. But one of the things that Joe always wanted to share was this friendship that he had. Joe had this amazing friendship and it was such a rich source of strength for him that he could never stop talking about it. And of course that friendship was his friendship with Christ. Because of his deep, profound relationship with the Lord Jesus, Joe couldn't be quiet. He couldn't stop talking about what faith did in his life. He couldn't stop telling other people what an impact it made on him, and he wanted to share that gift. He wanted to share his friendship with anyone he met because he knew it would make a difference in their life. And that's what leads us to poverty of spirit. You know, one time Joe said to me, he said, you know, Father, I'm not a good man, but I really want to be. And I said, you know, Joe, I don't know if that's true. I, I think you are a good man. But he also knew his poverty. He understood that he relied on the help of the Lord. That every day he got up and he placed his trust and his hope in the Lord, <clears throat> and he knew what he didn't have. He wasn't materially poor, but he was poor in spirit because he didn't ever want to rely on anything else other than the Lord. He didn't want to rely on his own strength. He didn't want to rely on his own wisdom. He wanted to rely on the Lord. And that's why in the gospel today, we hear how blessed those are who are poor in spirit. When we know our need for God, when we understand the place that God has in our life. And Joe did that. And that's what motivated his whole life. That's why he loved his wife. That's why he loved his children. That's why he loved his siblings and cousins and nephews. And it's hard to name them all. Because to Joe, everybody was family. To Joe, everybody belonged. And it's because he was animated and motivated by this deep love of the Lord. And so today we celebrate. We celebrate and we mourn because Joe was one of those people who brightened the room. Joe was one of those people who always helped us to laugh at ourselves. And Joe was one of those people who invited us to grow deeper in faith and love with the Lord Jesus. My brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join our prayers to his, and our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. In baptism, Joe received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead him over the waters of death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our brother Joe was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome him into the halls of the heavenly banquet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your son. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all whose faith is known to you alone. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of our brother Joe, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our brother Joe. Strengthen our hope, 
so that we may live in expectation of your son's coming. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people, whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom. Through Christ our Lord, amen. I invite you to be seated as we prepare the altar and bring forward the gifts.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servant Joe may be taken up into glory with your son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, plenis und celi et terra, gloria tua, Hosanna in excelsis, benedictus, qui venit in You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spur throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and all the clergy. Remember your servant Joe, whom you have called from this world to yourself, 
Grant that he who was united with your son in the death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be earned to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. It is our custom to invite those not receiving communion, whether Catholic or from another faith tradition, to come forward at communion for a blessing. Simply place your arms across your heart as a sign that you would like to receive a blessing.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that your servant Joe, for whom we have celebrated this Paschal Sacrament, may pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace. Through Christ our Lord, amen. I invite you to be seated, and I'd ask Jimmy and Megan to come forward and share some remarks. Let me begin by acknowledging our beautiful soloist. That elevates the human spirit, doesn't it? Um, I feel like Father David knows Joe as well as I do. Um, I had an advantage of a little more time. Joe and I spent close to 20 years together in a small bedroom and uh, we were sort of the odd couple. Uh, you all remember the series. Oscar, who was not particularly neat, and then Felix, who was very neat. Well, I was Felix, and Joe was Oscar. <laughs> and I, I'm forced to acknowledge with some humility and envy that I remember most people liked Oscar, not Felix. So. <laughs> Um, Joe is truly one of a kind, and um, if people didn't get a chance to see the wonderful obit that was put together by his daughters, Megan and Aaron, um, I commend it to you, and I'll share a few of those remarks because in fewer words than probably I will deliver today, I think they managed to capture Joe very well. Um, Joe was the third child of our parents. There were, as most of you know, six boys and four girls. And Joe was the second son. I'm the only brother, older brother that Joe had. And as I say, we lived together in the same old bedroom for close to 20 years, I suppose. And um, we both had the advantage of having spent a couple of summers in South Carolina with our maternal grandparents and nice aunts and uncles. And I think those few months that we spent there were very formative for all of us. Uh, I think it made us better people. Um, Joe was, uh, with my dad, somebody that really enjoyed the farm that we have on the Union Knox County line. Spent a lot of time up there. Enjoyed the farming, enjoyed the animals. Um, they mentioned his storytelling, and anybody who knew Joe knew what a storyteller he was. Father David alluded to that. Um, and it was tr truly the case that he never met a stranger, and it would be fair to say that he was something of a roamer in terms of his traveling. Um, there was one reference in the bit that made me stop and think a minute when there was a reference to his having the occasional classic car, and I had to think about that for a minute, uh, but I do remember one car that if it weren't a classic car, it was a classic Joe, because it was a Ford sedan that had five or six bullet holes in the back of the trunk, and uh, I think that Joe bought that car with the bullet holes in it, but I think he probably saw the conversation starter possibilities that that car offered because who meets a stranger who after a few minutes doesn't say, and um, by the way, why is the back end of your car shut up? You know, He had another unique car, I remember, and this tells you again the eclecticism of Joe. 
and that's a fancy word for what's coming next from this guy. And he had a Citron, which was a French car and an unusual looking car. And if it weren't unusual looking enough, Joe had a sticker on the back of it that said, free the Panoffs. And some of you may not remember that that was a Russian couple who were ballet dancers. And in the early 70s, the Russians would not allow or the Soviets would not allow the Panos to leave to immigrate to Israel. And there was a big stir nation, internationally. And uh, I suspect that Sir, Sir, Sir Lawrence Olivier and uh, uh, some of the other celebrities who were involved in that protest that was ultimately su successful thought that they may have my brother Joe join their movement. I think Joe probably felt that he was leading the movement with his... Uh, bumper sticker to free the Panoffs that was ultimately successful. Um, Joe had a big heart and uh, he um, was very charitable and I think that when some of my brothers were cleaning out the house along with uh, Aaron and Megan, they were just astounded at the number of charities that he had, you know, there's all the literature from the charities that he donated to, who are of course always, you know how that works, you make one donation and by return mail you get a request for a second donation. donation. And Joe had lots of those that he had uh, donated to so many charities and impressed upon um, his daughter, Megan I know, and probably Aaron as well, uh, as he was uh, at UT Hospital in the cardiac intensive care to take what a uh, little bit of inheritance he was passing along and to be sure to pass it along to charities as well. And so uh, that was the kind of person that Joe was. Um, he, he was uh, a one of a kind. He uh, did not always impress you with how smart he was, but he really was and probably had the highest IQ in the family. And uh, Joe taught math uh, to disadvantage youth for several years and uh, he was very bright and um, capable in academics. I think another vignette that gives you an insight into Joe that my daughter-in-law's father who lives in Memphis sent a nice note to me about all the time he enjoyed with Joe in Nashville, and I had to think for a minute, how in the world did you ever talk to my brother Joe in Nashville? Well, <laughs> but they had had a lot of conversations there where there are common family in Nashville, and <laughs> as odd as it would be, if there were anybody who was gonna make connection with my daughter-in-law's father in Memphis, it would be Joe in Nashville. <laughs> and he, he managed to do it on several occasions. I, I was amazed at what Mike was telling me about Joe. Uh, my sister-in-law, Maggie Johns Winnow, shared a thought that gives you another insight into Joe. She was talking about a recent New Year's Eve and as the hour of midnight approaches and everybody's thinking about champagne and kisses and the usual activities at midnight on New Year's Eve, Joe unsuccessfully for once attempted to lead what he thought would be a good, eye, good idea and a good time to have a group rosary. So <laughs> uh, I think that the crowd managed to impress upon him maybe a buzzkill at this moment, but later. <laughs> Maggie pointed out too that Joe was notorious. Uh, and I, This is one of the ways I think that my daughter-in-law's father got to know Joe is Joe showing up at parties that he wasn't invited to. <laughs> and uh, uh, when I w Maggie was talking about one of those and maybe one of the goofiest was that in retirement Joe was at one time doing some Uber driving and he gets a call to pick up two young ladies to be taken to a party. He gets there and finds out that the two young ladies that he's to take to the party are his nieces, Margo, and you know, I guess it was Bonnie and uh, Maddie. And so 
he's, uh, he's taking to Ma Maggie's house and he realizes he was supposed to be at the party. So he signs off with Uber and goes to the party. There, were, there was, a, when I was relating that incident to my son, Neil, he said, well, when he was in Nashville one time, there was a bridal, or I guess a baby shower, and it was just ladies only. And so all the husbands had taken their wives to the party and they're sitting outside and they see Joe walking up the driveway with a plastic bag. And the host uh, says, sir, may I help you? And the guy, and Joe says, isn't this the McDonald baby shower? <laughs> he said, yeah, it is. <laughs> so Joe goes in and uh, joins all the ladies. And then Neil said three hours later, Joe is in the backyard with all the guys having a beer and leading them in a chorus of God bless America. So uh, indeed one of a kind. Uh, the, the, it, my sister, my daughter-in-law's dad said, they broke the mold and truly they did with Joe. He was a unique individual. Uh, we love you, Joe, and we'll miss you. Thank you. As I sat down to write this, I searched for ways to describe my ridiculous, incredible, loving, fabulous father, Joseph Graham McDonald. He was first and foremost a man of God, dedicating his life in the service of his church, his family, his beloved home, Knoxville, and his fellow man. He gave his whole heart to everything he did. He believed that a life serving others was a life truly well lived. But as his daughter, he was my everything. He was my first best friend. He was my rock. My biggest fan, also my biggest critic. <laughs> uh, he was my partner in crime. He was stories about combine racing, and borrowing the station wagon without grandpa's knowledge. He was tractor rides. He was my own personal fashion police. He was Western movies. He was dancing in the living room. He was Saturday adventures. He was Joe McMuffins for breakfast. He was the smell of outside. He was singing at the top of our lungs on the long rides up to the cabin. He was, let's ride all the roller coasters. He was big hugs. He was truly embarrassing. He was long talks about his life and history and God and the saints. I got this, okay. Um, he was my favorite voice on the other end of the phone. He was always sneaking cheeseburgers after I made him eat a salad. <laughs> he was always somewhere with David. He was the sound of the garage door opening. He was church every Sunday. He was the long drive to Florida to see Big Aaron. He was always talking to strangers and praying extra hard for someone who really needed it. He was where I went when life fell apart and he was the person I wanted to make the most proud. He was my daddy. There was never a single second of my life that I didn't feel his unconditional love for me. I will spend the rest of my life with that love in my heart and striving to honor him and make him proud. Even though my father and I were not very close due to the fact I moved to Florida many years ago. I just will never forget all of the farm trips that I had with my father when I was young. And him saying to me, oh Aaron, you can do this. 
but daddy, I'm, one of the, I'm not one of the guys. Yes, you are. You're strong enough to do this. I will always remember also the good times with my father, the Mexico Beach trips, and the Gatlinburg trips with my stepmother, Liz. Even though all the McDonald family knows, my dad was not always invited everywhere, but he sure showed up. And also the most memorable times with my dad was the summer of my sister, Higgins to see you being born. And also his trip to Florida with his grandson, Michael, came into the world. <laughs> Megan and I have each other and thank God for a large family support. So always remember my father as the rosary man with a great heart. Thank you all for the support. Let us stand together. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother Joe. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. In paradiso, de tu te angeli, in tu adventu sucipiante martires, et per tu cante in civitatem Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Joseph in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon him in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and our brother forever. Through Christ our Lord, amen. amen. The Lord be with you. And with, and your, with spirit. your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. amen. In peace, let us take our brother Joe to his place of rest. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. See. 
Sings my soul. 